Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video about uh, extracting parallel task graphs from recursive problems. Uh, this is a problem that we went through a little bit in class, but uh, some have asked me to make a slightly more detailed video uh, explaining the process for generating this. And so I'm happy to do that. So we'll take a look at our recursive Fibonacci here. You're probably familiar with Fibonacci from some prior class. Uh, but generally, uh, you know, for Fibonacci 4, uh, you want to have the values of the prior two Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci of 4 is equal to Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 2. And so that's what this code implements. You'll see here that if this is 4, if P is 4, then P1 becomes 3, P2 becomes 2, and then we compute Fibonacci of 3, and we compute Fibonacci of 2, which gives us our results, and we add those two together. So these are the same. So if we want to generate a parallel task graph for this, uh, we actually want to do it much the way that we do our iterative algorithms. Uh, one key thing here that does apply also to iterative algorithms is we're going to use a slightly finer granularity than just the call to Fibonacci. We often talk about a function call as a task or a loop body as a task. In this case, we want to divide our code up into three main pieces, what we call pre, um, our Fibonacci calls, and our post computation. Those are our three components. And so for Fibonacci 4, you'll see we've drawn this here on the right. Fibonacci pre is where we start. We can do that first with no dependency. It generates P1 and P2. Those are our data dependencies for computing Fibonacci 3 and Fibonacci 2. And really, P1 is 3. So it also tells us which task we're going to do. Likewise, once we have P2, we find out we need to compute Fibonacci 2, and that's our other task. Once these return, whatever they return, we get an R2 and an R1, R2 and R1, and that becomes our post, which is our sum. And of course, you need R2 and R1 to compute the sum, and so that is the last task in our graph. Something to consider here is that we're only really looking at task four right now. Uh, it turns out that, you know, Fibonacci two and Fibonacci three have their own uh, subtasks that we can take a look at. And those subtasks can help us look at more parallelism. They can help us look at other features of this problem. So, uh, we can go ahead and expand it, and we should expand it because we want to seek the finest granularity possible where we could possibly get more parallelism. So our full graph for Fibonacci 4, again, this is the same problem, starts with Fibonacci for pre. Re recall this is the pre, and this is the post. We have to compute three and two, Fibonacci of three, Fibonacci of two, as we did in the previous ones. Fibonacci of three has its own pre. Uh, to compute Fibonacci of three, you need to compute Fibonacci two. Now, interestingly, we have Fibonacci of two over here. If you're familiar with this algorithm, you probably know that this is a redundant computation but we want to include it in our graph because it's the algorithm that we've been given. Uh, likewise, Fibonacci of two requires Fibonacci of one and Fibonacci of zero. Zero and one are our base case. So this is the end of our expansion. Likewise, on Fibonacci two, you need to compute zero and one on the left-hand side. And this is the end of our expansion over here. And I neglected to highlight Fibonacci of 1 here for 3, but we need to compute that as well. 
once we've done all of our pre-tasks and hit our base cases, we're at the bottom. So our tree stops expanding, our task graph stops expanding. It starts to shrink. We can add the result of one and zero together to find two. We can add the result of two and one together to find three. We can add the result of three and two together to find four. And then likewise, we do the same on the left-hand side. Uh, in the end, this gives us our sort of complete graph that we're interested in. Uh, and so if we want to take a look uh, at some details about this Fibonacci, uh, you know, the first thing to point out is our critical path here always follows P1 uh, because P1 is just minus 1. And so that will give us the longest path to the end. You go 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. The shortest path takes the other direction, minus 2, minus 2, and then you have less components, and the intermediate components have varying length. Uh, but overall, that's really how we want to do this analysis, is we have to expand it for each recursive call. And in problems like this, it benefits us to split this problem into its constituent parts, use a finer granularity of task. And you'll see that's what we've done here. And so this finer granularity helps us see where the parallelism really is. These pre-components can be computed in parallel um, for each task. And also the, the, the sums can be computed in parallel too. That's a slightly harder type of problem. It's called a reduction, which is something we'll talk about as we go through in this course. Um, but that's really, that's really it. Uh, and so that's our construction of our graph here. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.